Okay, so another video, let's get right into it. We're going to be talking about pyrolidamide and topical antiandrogens, but the focus of this video is mainly on pyrolidamide. Pyrolidamide is a topical, non-steroidal antiandrogen that's being developed currently by Kintor Pharmaceuticals. It's currently under clinical trials in China and also here in the United States of America, and there's a lot of hope because when it comes to the U.S. FDA, the U.S. FDA just approved Kintor in taking pyrolidamide to a second clinical phase trial, and it seems as if they're going to go on to their third clinical phase trial. So this is very exciting stuff. We know androgens like dihydrogen testosterone, or as many of you know, DHT, plays a significant role in hair loss. DHT causes the hair follicles to shrink over time, that is, with men who have androgenetic alopecia genetics, and this results in hair thinning and eventually the hair being gone, not growing again. Now, you may ask, why would somebody consider using a topical antiandrogen or something like pyrolidamide for treating hair loss? Well, here's why. When it comes to male pattern baldness, scalp DHT levels are the primary concern. It's DHT that signals the androgen receptors in the scalp of balding men or people or anyone who has the genetics for androgenetic alopecia, and this leads to hair follicle miniaturization and eventually hair loss. Pyrolidamide is designed to act directly at the scalp level androgen receptors, blocking DHT's access and thereby helping to prevent the miniaturization process. Because once DHT attaches to that receptor, various gene encoding processes occur and then it signals to the hair follicle, okay, time to grow less keratinocytes. Furthermore, when combined with oral medications like finasteride and dutasteride, which work to decrease overall DHT levels on the body and also the scalp, pyrolidamide provides a localized, targeted treatment that complements these systemic treatments, like I mentioned before, being finasteride and dutasteride. I think finasteride at 1 mg lowers DHT in the scalp between 30-40%. to 40%. You can check my other videos on that, where I go in depth to this scalp DHT thing. But when it comes to dutasteride, it lowers DHT in the scalp, starting at 0.5 milligrams, it lowers DHT in the scalp by 51%. And when you go to as high as 2.5 milligrams a dose for dutasteride, you can crush DHT in your scalp by, by upwards to 80%. And some men might need to do that because they probably have severe hair loss. The combined approach of using pyrolidamide topically and an oral antiandrogen creates a conducive environment for hair follicles to grow. It is in this environment where robust and healthy hairs can once again grow and your hair follicles can return to their normal functions before they are being targeted by androgenetic alopecia. And surely they will only return to their normal functions by going through a series of shedding cycles until they normalize and once again retain their healthy state. Now, pyrolidamide is yet to get approval from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, and when it does, it could very well be a game changer in hair loss treatments. Now, there's actually another topical antiandrogen that's been approved for another use case, and that use case is for acne. The acne medication, when levy, uses class cauterone, which is a topical antiandrogen to decrease acne. That is the active ingredient. But also there's this company called Cassiopeia, which is trying to make this product called Brizula, which will contain this class cauterone at a different concentration and be directed to the scalp in order to provide that anti-androgenic effect, which can help promote the hair follicles to grow. Now, this company is also in the FDA approval process. However, when comparing pyrolidamide to clos cauterone, we see some key differences. While both medications act as antagonists to the androgen receptor, clos cauterone is a steroidal antiandrogen and pyrolidamide is a non-steroidal antiandrogen. But what is more important is that pyrolidamide is noted for it being more potent when it comes to its anti-androgenic activity, and also it seems to have a low risk of systemic side effects, but again, they still have to go through the clinical trials. There's another option that many of you probably aren't familiar with, but it's been approved in Eastern European countries, and this is Fluoridil. Fluoridil is a less potent form of a topical antiandrogen like pyrolidamide, and also Fluoridil has a very unique attribute and that is 
it undergoes hydrolysis when it comes in contact with water. So this means it has virtually no systemic absorption because it breaks down very rapidly in the presence of anything that has water in it. This being blood itself, which if you <laughs> if you don't know, prime has a lot of water in it pretty much. So this makes it a safe option that you can probably get right now. It is approved in the FDA variant of some Eastern European countries. However, due to this property of it being susceptible to hydrolysis and breaking down very fast in the presence of water, it's important that Fluoridil is applied to a completely dry scalp to ensure its effectiveness. But again, it's not as potent and as powerful as pyrolidamide because pyrolidamide has a very high affinity and binding to androgen receptors. So once it's attached to your scalp follicle androgen receptors or your scalp androgen receptors, pyrolidamide is going to stay there for, for a while and ensure that DHT can't mess with your hair follicles and your follicles can presume growing in a manner that is healthy. Now, as we consider treatment regimens, it's important to note that a combination approach often yields the best results. Topical antiandrogens like pyrolidamide can be paired with hair stimulants such as minoxidil or even stamoxidine. And for those of you who don't remember, let's do a quick explanation. Minoxidil works by increasing blood flow and opening potassium channels, this is the theory, in hair follicle cell membranes. On the other hand, stamoxidine acts as a proleal 4 hydroxylase or P4H inhibitor, creating a hypoxic environment. This hypoxic environment causes stem cells in the hair follicle to reawaken and become active in growing hair again. Furthermore, we can also complement it with oral anti-androgen drugs like finasteride and dutasteride and or dutasteride. These medications further help to reduce the HT levels in the body and also the scalp, tackling hair loss from another angle. So in the end, as we await for potential new breakthroughs like pyrolidamide to be approved by China's FDA, because the company that's making pyrolidamide, the pharmaceutical company, Kintor is based in China, as we wait for that to be approved in China and also the US FDA, because they're currently undergoing clinical trials, Remember that effective treatment of hair loss often involves a multi-pronged approach, combining different therapies, each addressing a different aspect of hair loss or androgenetic alopecia can often provide the best outcomes. And also remember everyone has a different hair loss journey. People are using various experimental chemicals like RU58841. People are using other growth stimulants like latanoprost or bermatoprost the active ingredients that you find in Latisse that women and men also use to grow their eyelashes. So there's just so many ways you can go about doing it, but there are probably healthier ways and less risky ways of doing things. So always remember to, what do I say in these videos nowadays, to contact your doctor, okay? I'm just a guy that has a computer and a mic who also graduated recently, but I'm looking to get into scientific research, um, complete a bioinformatics path, and actually contribute to this space because it's super, super interesting, and I just want to contribute. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.